summary of rotational motion for level 3 NCEA. So there are several rotational quantities and the first of it is called angular displacement. So what does that mean? So if you have an object that is spinning and let's say something spins and point A goes from here to there and it's at the distance R from the center. So ratio of the arc of the circle by the radius is called angular displacement and it's measured in a unit called radians and so theta is d over r or d is equal to r theta. Angular velocity is how quickly angular displacement changes so the so change in displacement over time is angular velocity and if you rearrange this now theta is actually equal to d over r so if you so for omega is the unit a quantity the symbol for angular velocity but d over t is velocity so you get omega is v over r or v is equal to r omega the next quantity is angular acceleration is how quickly angular velocity changes or it's the rate of change of angular velocity so you got your formula for angular acceleration and change in angular velocity is actually final angular velocity minus initial angular velocity and then you've got the time or you can also rewrite it as um, because omega is equal to v v over r so you can put v over r over t and then it comes out that the connection between linear and angular acceleration so this is just a table to show you the relationship between linear quantities, displacement, velocity, acceleration, its rotational equivalent, which is angular displacement, angular velocity, and angular acceleration, and they all connected by the radius. Okay, if something is undergoing constant angular acceleration, just like we had these kinematic equations for linear motion, you have these equivalent rotational motion equations equation so i'm just substituting wherever you've got the v it's omega wherever you got the a it's alpha for angular acceleration time is the same and for displacement you've got angular displacement so you've got these equations which you need to use when solving problems if the angular velocity is changing at a constant rate okay so just like how we had graphs of motion you can also have graphs of rotational motion similar graphs but instead of displacement time you've got angular displacement time and instead of velocity time you get angular velocity time and this one's constant angular velocity constant angular acceleration for that shape and this one is constant angular velocity and if it's that it tells you that the angular velocity is increasing in which case it's undergoing constant angular acceleration moving on so torque is the turning effect of a force and so if you have something that's pivoted here and you apply a force what's going to happen is it's going to turn okay and torque is calculated by the size of this force times the distance from the pivot and torques can be clockwise or anti-clockwise because it makes things go in a circle Balance torques, um, if the torques are all balanced, that means clockwise torque equals anti-clockwise torque, then we say the object is in rotational equilibrium. How do you know something is in rotational equilibrium? It'll either be stationary or it'll be spinning with constant angular velocity. If there's an unbalanced torque, you're going to get angular acceleration. So an unbalanced torque produces angular acceleration. Here's your equation. And the constant of proportionality between torque and angular acceleration is rotational inertia, which is represented by the letter I. And rotational inertia tells you how hard it is to start or stop an object spinning or rotating. Now, rotational inertia depends on mass and where is that mass? How is it distributed? So the further away the mass is from the axis of rotation, the greater the rotational inertia. So I just try to draw two, two people, one trying to spin with their arms outstretched and the other one's got the arms close to the axis of rotation. So that one will spin faster. Now, the way that you explain this situation is by using the con concept of conservation of angular momentum. So anything that's spinning or rotating has angular momentum. So there are two types of 
rotational motion, one is called orbital motion and other is spin motion. For spin motion, the axis is within the object, the axis is around which. And for orbital motion, it's like the earth going around the sun, something is going around a center which is outside the object. So you've got two different formulae for angular momentum, I omega or L is equal to MVR. Now, conservation of angular momentum happens when there are no unbalanced torques. And so we say angular momentum before is equal to angular momentum after. There's loads and loads of situations and examples for this. So one is over here. Why do you spin faster when you bring your arms in? That's because angular momentum is conserved. And because angular momentum is I omega, you use this equation L is equal to I omega. When you bring your arms closer, your rotational inertia decreases, but angular momentum stays the same. So your angular velocity increases, causing you to spin faster. The same thing with a diver trying to do somersaults. This is the diver curling that person up into a ball. So in order to spin, to do those circles when falling into the water from jumping off a diving board. So again here, angular momentum is conserved. So when you curl your body up, the mass is closer to the axis of rotation. Notice the language. So uh, rotational inertia decreases but angular momentum is the same, so angular velocity increases. Rotational kinetic energy is anything that's spinning or rotating will have rotational kinetic energy. And here's the equation for rotational kinetic energy. It's half I omega squared. Okay, now rolling objects will have both linear as well as rotational kinetic energy because they are going forwards as well as spinning. Okay, so rolling down slopes, at the top of the slope, the energy before it starts moving, will it'll be all gravitational potential energy, which is mgh, that's your height. Okay, and when it comes down, there are two forms of energy that's converted into both linear as well as rotational kinetic energy. So that's the equation connecting them. And the one that reaches the bottom first is the one with the greater proportion of linear kinetic energy because that allows it to translate forwards. Now I've just drawn a table here. There for every rotational quantity, there's a linear equivalent. The only thing that's the same is time. And so this gives you all the linear quantities, their rotational equivalent, symbols and unit. So this probably just helps you get a grasp of the whole thing. What's important is when you're answering questions on rotational motion, make sure you're using these rotational quantities. And if you, if you mean torque, but you say force, it's kind of not perfect, okay? And if you mean dis angular displacement, but just say displacement, that's not good enough either. So just you just need to get familiar with these quantities. It's not that hard because there are equivalents for everything.